Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Ronald Wagner, a PhD in engineering at the Technical University of Braunschweig, an expert in the buckling of thin-walled shell structures, took it upon himself to perform linear and non-linear simulations of the Titan submersible. He collated the geometry of the vessel, he applied loads appropriate to the depth that the vessel traveled, and made best guesses as to materials used. And I'm quoting from engineering.com as a source. The article goes on to note that he analyzed three modes of failure, the, the viewport, the adhesive seal between the titanium end caps, as well as the collapse of the cylindrical hull. Of the three, the analysis of the latter is the most illuminating in the darkness of the tragedy. Using Abacus, which is well suited to nonlinear finite element analysis, or FEA, Wagner is able to show not only how the implosion occurred, as would high-speed photography played back frame by frame, but also explain, as no one has been able to do until now, the manner in which the carbon fiber may have shattered. As I say, that is all according to engineering.com. I don't know about you, but this is how I imagined the submersible disintegrating from the central point of the sausage inwards. But looking at this rendering, I couldn't help wondering, did OceanGate have a lead engineer on board? I mean, someone who was hired specifically to focus on the engineering side of things. Triton has John Ramsey, the principal design engineer. So who was principal design engineer of the Titan? And whoever he is, maybe he has some explaining to do. Are you sure you want to hear this? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Bear in mind, there are also conversations on this search on my Patreon. You can head to patreon.com slash TCRS if you want to participate. And uh, if you're enjoying this episode, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button. And let's get started. So it turns out OceanGate did have someone more or less fitting the description of the dude in charge of engineering at OceanGate. It's this guy, Philip Brooks. The interesting thing with Brooks is that although he's an engineer, he's an engineer of electronics, and he has a bachelor in computer science, cum laude nochal. In one sense, that makes sense. The inside of the Titan looks like two or three desktop monitors floating above a gym mat. And Stockton Rush used computing or tech terms to describe his ship, calling it at one point the iPhone among BlackBerry submersibles. Also worth noting is that Brooks is an ex-employee of companies like Siemens, Intel, Microsoft, and the Department of Defense. He spent four years at OceanGate starting in February 2019 as an embedded Linux engineer before being promoted to Director of Engineering in September 2021. Mid-COVID, in other words. He spent less than two years, basically a year and a half, as OceanGate's Director of Engineering before he parted with the company in March 2023, three months before the disaster, and only about two months before the final missions of Title's final seasons. In one sense, an expert who knows electronics is someone OceanGate would want on their team. But in another sense, it doesn't make sense at all. Do you really want an engineer with no experience in submarine systems or materials? Someone um, knowing electronics, but not knowing the other side of the coin, guiding the development of your submersible. This isn't to point a finger at Brooks. The real issue, I think, was that Stockton Rush didn't want an engineer like Triton's John Ramsey, who is both a design engineer specializing in mechanical engineering and something of a design artist. He didn't want someone like that telling him what to do. And you can actually see and feel some of John Ramsey's design flair in the impressive limiting factor. It seems the designer even imbued their flagship with a face. In comparison, the Titan is an incredibly hollow, dull, faceless vacuum of creativity. Prior to being hired by Triton, Ramsey worked with two British submarine entities. 
And I'm just trying to contrast him with his counterpart at Ocean Gate. In any event, the real question isn't so much about whether Brooks was an electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer, or whether he had experience in the submarine environment or not. It's why he left Ocean Gate this year, just three months prior to Titan suffering a catastrophic failure. I don't think you need to be an engineer to look at the situation that was evolving over time. And bear in mind, he was there for quite a long time. So you would imagine maybe he did see that some pattern was taking place, something was evolving. And so I don't think you need to be an engineer to also to just listen to what the craft itself was saying and make up your own damn mind. Just have to make up your own damn mind to either accept what I'm going to tell you or reject. As we know, several journalists did that. They used their own instincts. And so the question comes up, why did Brooks leave in March? Was he fired? Did he resign? Was he replaced? In the Pogue report, Brooks is referenced as someone in the know overseeing the operation, and that was in 2022. I'm quoting from the Intelligencer. David Pogue wrote the following. Phil Brooks, then Ocean Gates Director of Engineering, points out just how blind you are at that ink black depth. When you turn on your lights, you can see maybe three meters in front of you. You're driving around in pitch darkness. You can be five meters away from the wreck and not know it. The article goes on to state that Brooks said, We were concerned that our primary navigation tracking system was incorrect, so we started to cross-check it with the ship's GPS system. And guess what? The two signals disagreed with each other. Then and there, standing on the bridge, David Pogue experienced the tension, the quiet, sort of cut it like a knife tension going on at the bridge. But that was 2022. You had this individual overseeing situations like that. Who was that person in 2023? Who was that person when Hamish Harding and Nigele and the Day Wood duo and then also the CEO? Who was up at the top taking care of things, managing the situation? Was there even a new director of engineering or was it by default the CEO? I don't know, but this is a crucial question that we need answered. Do you agree? I'm not going to take it further than that, but uh, there is one thing I want to say, which is to illustrate how easily off track one can get when it comes to subtleties. Consider the fact that the nifty website that reported on the implosion, engineering.com, also drew the following conclusion. This is a quote from that article. The consensus of experts online seems to be, for the victims, there was no time to panic and a painless death. Well, that's not what I think happened. It seems incredible to me how bad people are in general at reading, at listening, at basic analysis. The consensus here, and correct me if I'm wrong, the consensus here at True Crime Rocket Science among my community is that the victims did know prior to the implosion that something was wrong, that after monitoring alerted them, they dropped their ballast and ascended, and that after an indeterminate time, obviously a period where there had to have been rapid heartbeats and wide eyes blinking in the low light, the craft did eventually implode. That didn't catch them unawares. I'm sure, I'm sure they were panicking. But I do think when the end came, it was mercifully quick and painless. In the next episode, I'll be following this analysis with part two of what was driving Stockton Rush. Also, if you're unfamiliar with this channel and you want to get a feel for true crime analysis in real time, check out my coverage videos that I've been putting up on the Long Island serial killer, uh, the, the investigation, the search for more evidence, more information sur- surrounding that case, all of that is playing out in real time right now. So if you haven't already checked that out, please do. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. 